She's continuing this dash as the Democrats' presidential nominee with a new ad all about women's rights. And her campaign just sent speakers to a key state where Biden had been trailing Trump when he was the nominee, Pennsylvania. Vice President Harris has been battle tested. She is ready to not just be the standard bearer of our party, but to be the 47th president of the United States. Hey everybody, so today Iowa put in place a Trump abortion ban, which makes Iowa the 22nd state in our country to have a Trump abortion ban. Kamala Harris, the prosecutor who keeps communities safe. Yeah. Kamala Harris, the senator who knows how to deliver results. Yeah. Kamala Harris, the vice president who puts America back on track. Yeah. Couple governors there making the case in front of those Harris for President signs. This is some of the fastest campaign advance work in this cycle, but by necessity, just as Harris is about to pick her running mate. It could be as soon as within a week, according to reports that we have. That's a rush to complete this new ticket long before the convention lands. And you'd have to do the advance work of the signs with the second person's name and the speeches for the convention and all the other stuff that is being packed in. Harris has been at it for eight days now with about a dozen weeks until early voting starts, give or take, and 99 days till the election day itself. Her fast ascent has not, we should note, been greeted with any kind of rolling Democratic anxiety about the process that got us here over the last week or the potential alternatives. And I mention that because how quickly things changed, that was the kind of stuff that many D.C. pundits, including sort of center-left pundits, kept talking up during that month of debate about whether Biden was going to drop out and all those hypothetical musings about open conventions or if the Dems handed it right to her, would there be a legitimacy issue? We're not seeing any of that, even if it was in the minds of the pundits who are, sorry, usually wrong. What are we seeing? Something closer to a kind of united glee, at least within the party. That's the theme of today's new cover of New York Magazine that I'm going to leave up here for you. So you can drink it in, like so many pina coladas. It features basically every wing and symbol of the party celebrating and dancing from Obama and Pelosi to Clooney and Beyonce. And Harris, as you see there, sits quite comfortably and victoriously atop a coconut, a reference to one of her funny viral hits that her fans have claimed as their own. And of course, and you see in the text across the coconut, a possible new moniker, I don't know if it'll stick, Camelot with a K. That's a remix of the Democrats' favorite long-standing dynasty, Kennedy's Camelot of, of course, the JFK era and the Kennedys beyond. Now, that magazine cover, they're having some fun with it, like many of Harris's fans, but the excitement is also serious for the home stretch of a high-stakes, expensive, and hard-fought campaign that we expect. Other accounts have noted how Harris led Democrats in basically a week to do something that had elided this party for many, many months. You watch the news, because if you don't, you, you wouldn't be hearing me. If you watch the news, I think you know what I'm talking about. I think you lived through it. This now is something that was not happening the last several months. This Democratic Party is united, excited, and back at work. Call it the Kamala Harris vibe shift, as one writer put it in the New York Times, noting the race that felt to many Democrats like a dispiriting slog toward an all but certain defeat, suddenly feels lighter, hopeful. People are even feeling, is that joy? And the insiders and pundits who had very clearly diminished Harris during part of her tenure as VP, a role that can temporarily kind of shrink a lot of different political figures, well, that looks like a view, and everyone's entitled to have it. You can have any view you want here in America, as long as we remain a civil society. But that view does look more bearish than at least the way the Democratic base is feeling about Harris, if not possibly the wider electorate. Because people are now taking in Kamala Harris as a somewhat familiar quantity whose stock appears to be rising, as clips new and old of her zing around the web with a, a kind of palpable excitement that this is now different than the current president, this is the voice of the Democratic Party trying to do something that, whatever its differences, a lot of people th feel is still a very important goal. The voice of a party trying to stop Donald Trump one last time. Are you questioning people like a prosecutor or like a senator? 
both. I am States. not going to be confined to Donald Trump's definition of who I or anybody else is. A crime against any one of us is a crime against all of us. This is not the first time in my life I've been called names. And it, you know, it was predictable, sadly. Yeah. Do you remember which reggae star you quoted in your announcement speech? Bob Marley. Why did you quote Get Up, Stand Up in that speech? <laughs> Because it was all about saying we got to stand up for our rights. So many of us have so much more in common than what separates us. Harris's fluency with reggae inspiration, as the daughter of a Jamaican, seems to coexist with some of those more traditional credentials, a DA, an attorney general. And a fondness for, and I say this like I try to say so many things around here, respectfully, her fondness for a certain kind of California spiritual chic is playing more like an asset with a lot of young people and Democrats than the supposed gaffe that those quotes or laughs were treated as in the Beltway. Now, you can't measure these vibes or the inspiration I'm mentioning, but you can count $200 million raised here in a week, smashing records, 170,000 new volunteers. Again, we'll see whether they all show up, but if they do, that's a heck of a lot of people. And 3 million new followers on TikTok, where viral political messages reach farther and the television you're watching. It's true, I'm just gonna say it's true, whether you like it or not. TikTok, one of the most visited domains worldwide, and its viewership of a big video can outstrip, say, the evening news by double and triple. So Musk and Trump may have what remains of Twitter. Harris has these more influential sites buzzing. As the New York Times put it, more liberals are making this viral Harris content organic, homemade, faster than any top-down business or campaign can make out of a campaign headquarters. I invite you to think of these as the homemade yard signs of our time. Bless my soul, come on, who's on a roll? Looking like a snack while taking down the Trump patrol. Kamala, what are we going to say to Donald Trump in November? Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Now, is this just for kids? Is this just for liberals? Is this just for people who use TikTok? Maybe you don't. There are signs that it is not, that what starts in the kind of creative, super fast, viral energy of today, something that Obama also benefited from with slightly different apps and tactics, is spreading farther. I bring to you a Reagan speechwriter, Peggy Noonan, who now writes for the Wall Street Journal, which is a Murdoch publication that is generally, although not exclusively, but generally very pro-Trump. She sees this dichotomy, too. This thing I told you about contrasting the beltway to everyone else, quote, among those who follow politics closely and are highly online for political content, views of Ms. Harris hardened long ago. Think of people who obsess over the Washington Post and the New York Times online or watch a ton of news in the Beltway. But she continues, quote, but to those of relaxed engagement, especially the young, she will be a new figure. They'll be seeing her for the first time. They'll be open, she says, perhaps warning, to what they see. Now, whether you think Donald Trump should not return to the White House, or you really like the Biden-Harris administration, or you really like Kamala Harris, that's politics. Ms. Noonan is referring to something that can happen through politics, but not only of politics. And that is that we might open our eyes again and see the people and policies that are on the ballot this year. Whatever people think of Joe Biden and his record and his long period of public service, there was a lot of evidence that he had become something else to so many voters, something in the way of the clarity of this choice. And it would seem now, as we're still in this now second week, eight days into this, that this is turning a little bit, that the entire focus here, and we're only in the summer, is now back to the real stakes of these choices, and people might really see them and not be obscured by what even Democrats, what even Pelosi and Jeffries and Schumer thought was no longer the perfect standard bearer in a high-stakes year. Some of the Democrats who seem so despondent are now delighted. Now, tonight we can report there are 99 days until the election. 
You might say Harris has 99 days and a day of dyspeptic democratic anxiety will not be one of those days left.